This conference will now be recorded. Communities. So I call the MRPC meeting of Thursday, January 5th, 2023 to order at 7 p.m. Welcome everybody and happy new year. Hopefully it we good for everybody and uh, we'll have a fantastic new year here at MRPC. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is introductions. And I like to do that by just reading off the list of people that I have here. If I've missed you by the end of it, please speak up. And that way we basically have a uh, roll call here. Uh, no need to answer present. Uh, the way it shows here, we'll show you here. Uh, so I start with Jason Stanton, Lynn Butland, Amanda Reed, Barbara Yoakum, Brad Harris, Deb D'Amico, Amico, sorry, uh, Doug Thornton, Jeff Tillerson, uh, George Cahill, Glenn Eden, uh, Guy Corbusero, myself, Holly Ford, John Telepiak, Christoph, uh, Monroe, sorry, Kyle Madowitz, uh, Laura Shifflin, Linda Quinlivan, Peter Cunningham, Rick Ward, Robert Schwartz, and Roger Hoyt. Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, not hearing anybody, we'll move on to announcements. Do anybody, does anybody have an announcement uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the meeting tonight? No, no announcements. Uh, then we move on to uh, the minutes for December 8th, 2022. Uh, they were distributed on the website. Uh, you got a link to them. Uh, does anybody have any additions, subtractions, or corrections? Not hearing any. I uh, move, uh, ask for a motion to uh, approve the uh, minutes of December 8th, 2022, as presented. Uh, all for a motion that we approve the minutes from December 8th, uh, 2022, as presented. Thank you, Peter. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second Jeff Tillotson. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, again, any additions, subtractions, corrections? If not, I will call the roll call. I don't have... Uh, my list of communities. So if I double call you, uh, they'll straighten it out in the end. You know, your community, we have two people here. Okay. Uh, Lynn Butland. Abstain. Uh, Amanda Reed. Aye. Barbara Yoakum. Aye. Uh, Deb D'Amico. Abstain. Doug Thornton. Abstain. Jeff Tillotson. Aye. Um, Guy Corbusero votes aye. Uh, John Telepiak. Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, Christopher Monroe. Is this, uh, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Uh, can Monroe. you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear you now? As the yes. commercial says. <laughs> uh, abstain. Okay. Kyle Nartowitz. I got a thumbs up from Kyle. Uh, Laura Schifrin. Aye. Uh, Linda Quinlivan. Uh, sorry, never mind, Linda. Peter Cunningham. Huh, Cunningham, I. Okay, Robert Schwartz. Abstain. And uh, Roger Hoyt. Roger Hoyt, aye. Uh, thank you, Roger. Okay, very good. Minutes are. Excuse me, guy. Yes. Uh, I couldn't get my mic to get on. This is John Telepsiak. I my vote would be abstain. I wasn't here. Okay, very good. Thank you, John. Certainly. Uh, and again, and again, if you're having problems with your mic, you can always uh, 
do as uh, Jeff did and just give me a thumbs up. Okay, from now we'll move on to uh, the cash schedule. <laughs> Dogs, I don't know if you can hear them. Um, hang on one second. Uh, we have the cash schedule uh, for 12 22 to 12 22. Uh, are you uh, going to take this one? Um, uh, I'm going to ask that. This is Laura Schiffer, and I'm going to ask well, that. Laura, Linda okay. Very good, sorry. I have no um, comments this evening. Okay. And you said you were going to ask who to do it? Linda. Linda. No problem. I'd be happy to. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, could we please uh, display the cash schedule on the screen? Okay, very good. Uh, could you do that, uh, uh, Jason? All right, give me one second. Uh, sure, no problem. There it is. Thank you. My bad. Okay, I'll set for you, Linda. Okay. Uh, the opening balances from November 30th, 2022 was $666,026.07. Total uh, of all receipts was $161,807.16, making the total cash on hand before the warrant 827000 $833.23, and the amount of this warrant, which includes all cash uh, disbursements, was $105,451.60, leaving the balance um, of total on deposit of $722,381.63. Okay, very good. Do we have any questions of Linda? And also, just for note, on the website, along with the warrant, is display uh, the uh, cash in and out for the different accounts. So you can always get the info uh, broken down more information there, uh, the disbursements and money coming in. Um, if not hearing any questions, uh, I would like somebody like to approve the warrant subject to audit or accept the warrant subject to audit, actually. Uh, this is Laura Schiffer, and I'll make the motion to accept the warrant subject to audit financials for this past month. And Roger Hart. Thank, Thank you, Laura. One second. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we have a first and a second. Do we have any questions? If not, I'll uh, call the roll. Um, Lynn Butlin. Aye. Amanda Reed. Aye. Ari Yoakum. Aye. Deb D'Amico. Aye. Doug Thornton. Aye. Jeff Tillotson. Aye. Um, Guy Corbusier, the chair votes aye. While I pause, uh, John Telepiak. Oh, I see a John got his hand up. He votes aye. Uh, Christopher Monroe. Aye. Kyle Nortowitz. Ah, uh, I think he also has his raised hand. Uh, Laura Schifrin. Aye. I almost did it again. Peter Cunningham. Yeah, Cunningham, aye. And uh, Robert Schwartz. Aye. And uh, last but not least, Roger Hoyt. Aye. Okay, and the, uh, the cash uh, schedule is accepted subject to audit. Okay, next item on the agenda, unanimously. 
Uh, now we move on to guest announcements and questions. And uh, this is a point, uh, George, do you have anything tonight or? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't have any new update at this time. Okay, thank you very much, George. Um, if anybody else, announcement, otherwise we'll move on to administrative matters, which uh, now is Glenn's uh, purview, uh, section five. Glenn? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, uh, uh, Chairman Corsero, would you do me a favor? Could you announce that the meeting's held remotely under the governor's open meeting law? Oh, on sorry for that. Next 31st? Yeah, could yes. you just do that 30-second spiel, if, if you sure. would? Sure, right in the 30 seconds. Uh, this, how we have forgot that, this meeting is held under uh, Governor Baker's suspension of the open meeting law, sections of the open meeting law, as of 2019, I don't have the exact date in front of me, but uh, I think that covers it, Glenn. And all yes, sir, thank you. I hope are taken rem rem remotely. Remotely roll call. Thank you very much. We just uh, want to make sure we're, we're doing our due diligence. Thank you, sir. Yes, th thank you very much for reminding me, Glenn. That's all right. I'll credit goes to Holly. <laughs> Holly sent me a team's message, so I just I thought I'd put it out there. That's all. Thanks, of Holly. Course. Much appreciated. <laughs> Um, Thank you, Holly. Yeah, let's give credit where credit's due, right? Um, 5.1, a little bit of budget stuff, not too much, not too heavy. No spreadsheets, no boring tables. Uh, the gist of it is that on February 9th, which is our next meeting, uh, not February 2nd, just so everyone, so if you're penciling things in now, uh, we're on the 9th, just so you know. Um, we'll do a handful of amendments to the FY23 budget, the budget which we're in right now, which ends June 30th of this, this year. Of 2023, well, that's tough to say. Let's see, a couple, just a couple of bullets for um, uh, amendment-related items. So the district local, the first bullet is what I'm talking about, the district local technical assistance program, or DLTA. So the regular program, we call it through the state and local in, in the office, we call it program year 15. Uh, that just ended on December 31st, and program year 16 will start January 1st first or we'll, we'll get a contract around January 1 to January 15th for for one time only bullet number one says DLTA augmentation funds program term or contract term January something to June 30 2024 18 months 138 grand to be so that 130 will be spread over 20 fiscal 23 and fiscal 24 there was a call for proposals for the DLTA program year 16 fund that went out a couple weeks ago. Karen sent that to all the communities. We've already received some proposals. This DLTA augmentation fund is more DLTA money. So if it's an ice cream sundae, it's extra hot fudge, okay? This is either ARPA or another federal fund, most likely the ARPA bunnies that have come down through the state and the state's making available to the regional planning agencies and the councils of government. The one differentiation I want to point out between the regular DLTA funds and augmentation is that we'll be able to offer grant writing services and charge it to the DLTA augmentation contract, which opens up a whole new world for us delivering services to our communities. And we can talk more about that uh, when the call for proposals go goes out. You'll see that I would look for that. You, you'll all receive that. Members and alternates or delegates and alternate delegates of the communities receive that. Um, and Karen will send that out as soon as we can. I think it'll be in January. Um, the second bullet, uh, we can reduce salaries because we had one of our part-time senior planners resign at the end of August. So she didn't, I, we had allocated funds for her through December 31st of 2022, but she only worked for two months and the other four months, you know, we're gonna basically save a few grand, 12 or 15, whatever. So we'll make a reduction there. <coughs> Sorry, also, Apologies, let me get some water. I had in the budget a 3D uh, 3D intern, an intern for 3D printing and map making. I want to take that out of the budget. I want to be a little, a little more conservative for the balance of 23. Let's see. Uh, the third bullet talks about what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, it says the use of a, a small amount of administrative dollars for the completion of five projects through 
June 30, 2023. It's English, but what is what the heck does it mean? What it means is that under the Planning Development Department, we've had a slew of contracts for three years. All of that time under COVID, we got assaulted with a lot more contracts, a lot more projects to do. Uh, some are still being done from two years ago that should have been done 18 to 24 months ago. What we have to do is I have to allocate some admin money to the five planning and development staff where they're going to charge a small amount of money. It's up to 21 grand on about five contracts of, that they have to finish. They had a total of seven. They finished two on December 31st of 22. They still have to finish five more and those five will be done this coming June 30th. All right. So we're going to use some admin money to have them charge that. Well, why do we do that? Because we can't have them charge to other contracts uh, on which they're delivering services. You know, we can't have someone delivering a service uh, to a, an MBTA, you know, 3A technical assistance housing units, multifamily housing program, and then still, still deliver the, the completion of a contract that was due, you know, a year ago. So most, if not all, these contracts have been extended. We've been working with our partners. They've been working with us. COVID slowed everybody down. But that's what that third bullet means. But there'll be an adjustment from the budget. Uh, the fourth bullet, the elimination of the regional plan and the interim positions, which I already really just talked about. Jason, could you go down a little bit, please, sir? MRPC will inform the communities about the following programs, ideally increasing our services to communities, and they are. So if, you, if you're familiar with the Massachusetts One Stop Program, One Stop Grant Program, if you're not, Google it. If you want a link, we'll give you one tonight in the chat. But there are at least a dozen programs that are available through the One Stop Program. These are five of those 12, all right? And the first one, Digital Equity Partnership Planning, will be delivering services to communities with digital equity plans. The Mass Housing Choice, the, the uh, let me see, the fifth one, the Mass Housing Partnership MBTA Communities, and I believe the Mass Community Planning Grant Program, uh, plus the DLTA Program, all four of those resources can be used for MBTA communities, of which we have 14 uh, in the eastern part of the Modern Transit region, address the, um, the state statute that basically says, uh, hey, under zoning, now you have to have a multifamily district in your community. We're working with some communities also. There's a lot of technical assistance. There's a lot of planning that has to be done, and this will go through most of 23, probably into 24. Karen has an excused absence tonight. She's under the weather, so she can give you better details. But that's the gist of the, the cuts that we're going to propose, some of the additions for revenue, we'll add the 138 for the DLT augmentation to the budget. I want to make you aware of these grant programs that could hit our books in June 20, in uh, FY23 and FY24. And then last lap but not least, Mass, um, MRPC Transportation Department has been uh, delivering services and earning revenue outside of the Mass dot contract we have. Uh, for transportation and transit planning services. And what uh, uh, basically Brian Doherty and Brad Harris are now talking to Hubbardston about what it says they're doing an inventory and survey of all pavements and sidewalks in Hubbardston. And they did a, a pavement management project in another community about a year or so ago. So, you know, generally speaking, there are, it, it's like being in, in Washington State during the salmon run, okay, folks? All the salmon in the river are spawning, going upstream. It's like it's like the federal government that's still printing money. Um, so it, it's it's good good news now. You know, in a couple of years, this will, the spigot will turn off, and we'll have to face that at that time. But these are some you'll see the numbers on February 9th, Just an FYI, this is just a, a kind of a commercial and a heads up. If there aren't any questions, Mr. Chairman, I can move on to 5.2. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a comment. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, it, I, I love the uh, love the analogy there, Glenn. So we're sort of like the grizzly bears on the side of the river, just scooping up the salmon. <laughs> In a way, yeah, a yeah, way, you're okay. absolutely right. I like that. Yeah, but you know what? Grizzly mm -hmm. bears also have lean times when the salmon don't run as well. Do. So yeah, that's do. that's two and a half to three years. But mm -hmm. you know, as long as we're all conscious of that and we work together and we we keep, you know, delivering our services to local communities when they're in need. We don't have a local, a lot of local contracts right now. You know, that'll fill that gap later. But we always have to be diligent about this. But, but, Mr. Cunningham, thank you for your comment. Um, just a quick update on the digitization project. We're going to have a meeting this Friday uh, with Rico about getting a quote. Um, Rico 
puts its clients through a process of they don't just do a quote for to digitize all the documents we want to have digitized and save for, for posterity digitally, which will take up a lot less room than 50 to 60 bankers boxes that are now spread throughout the atrium. Um, but this is my third meeting with Rico to get a quote and ideally I'll get the quote tomorrow and then you'll see it February 9th. And I don't know when that'll hit the budget. I don't know what the number is yet. They won't give it to me. They, they have to meet with me. Um, a quick takeaway and I'll be objective and say, I'll get multiple quotes that just, just send me your numbers because, you know, three hours of administrative time just to get a quote is, is, is there's a cost here. 5.3, uh, there was no meeting for the round table uh, in December, so we'll have that late uh, January, and I'll report on that February 9th. 5.4, I extended the grant writing consultant um, deadline to, uh, what did I do? February 6th at midnight, which is a Friday, and then uh, I'll, I'll publish the quotes at the commission meeting and say, this is what we got, this is my recommendation to hire one or more consultants, and then we'll move on. And then I didn't have anything else under 5.5. .5. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm done, sir. Okay, very good. Do we have any questions of Glenn? Uh, not hearing any, we'll move on to uh, uh, Section 6, the first quarter contact status report and department updates. Uh, we had voted uh, going back a... Um, about six months ago to do status reports quarterly. Uh, now, in work fleshing this out, I started reading uh, sections of the status report, going through each heading, uh, and the status report is 14 pages long. It contains a lot of information. Uh, any of the product uh, products that you're receiving from MRPC uh, is probably listed on there for your community. But instead of me uh, going on for 15, rattling on for 15 minutes, uh, the status report uh, is on the uh, website in the documents for tonight's meeting. I'd uh, urge you to go and um, check it out. Uh, you know, DLTA information, geographic information systems. Uh, and there's a whole lot in there, but I won't bore anybody on reading each one out, or if you have a question, uh, you can ask as we go on to the uh, next section. Here, let me switch my computer. I am going to now go to each section and uh, or each department, see if they have anything new to add. And if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. So the uh, first we'll go with the uh, geographic information systems. Uh, thank you. Uh, best one. goes first. Please. I said best goes first, so thank you for that. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I do not. I do not have any updates to the uh, status report at this time. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of Jason? No questions. We'll go on to uh, six point two, planning and development. That is usually Karen. I think she's uh, not here today, so. Glenn, do you have any comments in regards to this section? I just want to credit Karen uh, for, for, for providing a, a voluminous, a lot of narrative in that report. So if Groton was in the room as an example, then uh, Peter, yes, you are. Uh, there's a lot of information about Groton there tonight and so many of the towns. So my credit to Karen's writing. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to field them tonight. I can't field detailed questions about where the status of this is today. Uh, but then follow by an email with Karen or me or somebody else. Please, please do. Thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, very good. Thank you, Glenn. Any questions of Glenn in regards to planning and development? Not hearing any. We'll go on to transit and transportation. Uh, Brad, do you have anything uh, to add that isn't in the uh, the uh, quarterly update? Uh, nothing really to add, but I just want to call attention to the section on the regional transportation plan update. Um, we have information up on our website now on the current work that's going on with the transportation plan. Um, if you just if you scroll down to the RTP uh, task, uh, you'll see a picture of the front page of the MRPC website. And over on the, a uh, little bit more, yep, right there. And over on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, an arrow pointing to a banner on the uh, 
our website. Uh, that will take you to the RTP 2024 update website uh, where you can find information on uh, meetings, documents, and so forth as where we stand in that uh, um, process. Also, the prior public uh, information website or workshops we held, uh, the videos of those are also available on that website. So I'm just calling your attention to that. And then also um, a little bit further down is a copy of um, the current public survey that we have out for, uh, for response. Um, it can be linked through our website on the front page. Um, there's also paper copies have been made available to each community's library and senior center. And we'll be picking those up hopefully at the end of this month and start tabulating the results from that survey. So I just want to call your attention to those two items. Great, thank you, Brad. Any questions of Brad? Uh, not hearing any, we'll move on to uh, item seven, new business. Does anybody have any new business I'd like to uh, bring before the board? Uh, just not hearing any. We move on to uh, section eight, adjournment. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Unless somebody's got some questions. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Tillerson. Move to, move to adjourn, Jeff Tillerson. Okay, do I have a second? Second, Bob Swartz. Thank you, Bob. Uh, if anybody objects to us adjourning, please say so. Not hearing any uh, objection, I will call this meeting adjourned at 727.